um, what? Oh, the property. Uh, let's see, the auto property is not working. Yeah, let's hit stop here. Let's rethink this for a minute. So here's the issue. Oh no, did it drop again? Am I getting am I getting inter intermittent internet again? I see people saying it's back. That means I was out. Uh, you missed nothing, so <laughs> that's good. Uh, so I was kind of walking through this idea and. Um, it's not working the way I want. I know it's not going to work the way I want it to. And uh, let me go back to what I had before. And I'll explain what I was trying to do, why it won't work. Um, some of it has to do with the form life, life cycle. Then some of it has to do with the event life cycle. Uh, so I was gone for two minutes. Yikes. Um, yeah, Internet's been a little choppy today again. And uh, it seems to be like when we have storms. Uh, we've had storms for two days, so the rain has probably waterlogged something here, and uh, it's getting intermittent upload speeds. I was hitting between 10 meg up to and 2 meg up uh, periodically this morning, so uh, glad to see it came back. So what I'm trying to do, if I select Earth, I don't want Earth to show up here. The problem is I was going to just uh, do a little... Um, a little uh, link, link statement to say don't show that if it's here. Uh, the problem is if I select Earth here, then I select something else here, then I come back and I select this here, then it's going to change this. So that will also change that. Oh man, you don't even get 10 meg down. Jeez, I thought I had it bad. Um, I had 10 plus years ago, maybe 15. I had fiber optic internet and I had 50 down, 50 up and paid half the price I pay now and I moved and that has been the worst part of moving. And that was interesting. I just saw that little bug pop up again. So when you select the... Huh. Wow, there's some real shenanigans going on there. We'll have to look at that later. Um, so if I select Earth, then I, I think I need to do this on the selected event. So let's take a look at the selected event. Uh, we're actually going to have to have uh, a different set of locations here. So on our form on locations, we're actually going to need two of these, I think. So locations, instead of locations, we have to stop this. Oh, 0.7 up. Jeez, that's like dial-up speeds. Uh, still location details, departure locations, we'll call it, or nope, destination. Destination locations. How many things will I break if I, hey, let's do a little smart renaming here. Departure locations destination locations and then when we call on to our on location changed event then we can set our uh, our um, destination locations to await and we can then call um, D 
db context dot locations dot where where the location id is not equal to so we want to get everything but the location with this id and then we have to parse the integer uh, let's see parse uh, selected value and then to array async. So then we'll turn that array into an array. And I've got too many parentheses, and there we go. So now we can set our destination locations like that. And on our form or our page, we have uh, des departure locations. This needs to be, that actually got refactored for me. The refactoring tools found it and replaced it. I was surprised for a second there. So now we've got two different sets of locations and it changes on that event. So then if the event changes, we have a place where we can handle all of the um, uh, unintended consequences of changing that value. So I'm sure there'll be some things I haven't quite thought through where those items change each other. So let's take a look. Now if I select Earth, this should no longer have Earth. That worked. If I come back and select the Moon, this one went back to Earth. However, these did not change. So I need to fire that event somehow. So that's interesting. So if I'm in here and I have an on location changed event happen, that also affects my destination locations. So what I need to do is then, hmm, how do I set that value? I don't, uh, I don't want to fire that whole event off. What I want to do is clear those drop downs out. So what I want to do is if I select this item, then I clear that and I clear that back to default. I can set this value, but it doesn't seem to affect. Yeah, it's not going to affect that drop down. Hmm. Let's think for a second here. We can call on destination change. But that's only, that's not going to change this value. I can clear this by setting the destination ports to nothing. And I can set this to, yeah, I can't set that. I can't clear that. Earth's moon, Earth. Well, if I pick Mars, then I change it to Mars. Then it defaults to the first item. Defaults to the first item, and then the that doesn't change at all. Uh, so let's think. If I select this, I get that. If I have this, oh, it did it again. It did it again. Why is it doing that? I caught it again that time. 
it doesn't do it every time. Um, so hopefully the stream is still running. Um, if I select Earth and I, I leave that alone, I select Moon, it didn't do it again. I don't know how many of you caught that, but every once in a while, I don't know if this is a bug or what. If I select this and then select this, this keeps clearing out randomly. There, it did it, it did it. Why did that affect that? How did that affect that? I am not crazy. I did see what I thought I saw. So if I select an item here and an item here, sometimes it clears my selection here. But not all the time. I'm glad I have a recording of that because I can at least go back and see. Boy, that is so strange. It doesn't do it every time. Anyhow, um, I'm halfway there. I'll have to figure that other bug out later. It's intermittent, so it's not going to be easy to track down. If I come in here and select this item, this one needs to change back to select a location. Hmm. Or at least default to another location. So I can handle some of this by setting the form value. Events are probably not all firing in the same order. I wonder if it has something to do with the weight and something is not. Yeah. Some kind of like race condition or something strange. But Earth, Moon, Mars, whatever. What's odd is it puts a. Um, It puts this, the drop down is still there. It just changes the selected value to nothing. It nulls it or something. And I can't seem to recreate it. It just does it at random. That's kind of scary. Um, I'll have to share that with uh, the ASP.NET team and see what they think. Um, anyhow, so if I'm selecting my location, and I'm filtering the destination locations, I also need to then reset the, I need to reset the form.selected destination is now equal to, um, let's do this, select Uh, wait, select, what did I have in here? This actually is probably going to come out of here. Yeah, select a location. Yeah, select a location is what we will make that value. And then, uh, if I keep saying that, I'm gonna have to steal that and then meme from uh, Jeff. I've gotta stop saying that. All right. Uh, so we'll select the form. The departure ports gets reselected. And if I select that, instead of setting it explicitly, oh wait, no, this is departure. Um, here, let's see, I'm tangling all this together. So this sets our departures. This will set our destinations. Um, and our destinations will change. Let's try it this way. 
let's call it directly on destination changed. Uh, this value will not be able to be parsed. So that's going to fail. So we can't set it that way. Darn. Oh, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Form. Select the destination equals. Let's set it to nothing and see what happens. If I set it, the selected value is nothing. Let's try setting it to nothing and see what happens. And then we can figure out where to take the next step. Just trying to throw something at it, see what sticks. We'll null out the selected destination. Reset the locations. But then our destination ports will be off, I think. So if I select Earth, Earth's moon, come back, select the moon, that cleared out properly. This did not. This actually needs to go back to its default state as well, which will then nullify and disable. Uh, and to do that, if ports is null, so we need to set that to null, that, that'll work. So then, we will just ensure that ports is null. Ports is null. Is that going to work properly? Yep. Nope, 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 nope. I'm getting an error uh, already. Type is used like variable, so that is not the proper name. Should be destination ports is null. So if we set that to null, then the drop down box should get its value back to select a location uh, because when that value changes, it will update the UI, I hope. If we do that, we will have all of those little UI interactions fixed. These are things that we tackle with form um, development all the time. So it's nice to kind of explore this behavior and see what happens when we do things like this. Ah, worked perfectly. Cleared out both locations and now we can only choose these so look at that guys it worked it did it um, so now all the selections are in tune with each other oh I see a little goof there but uh, might just make this a defaulted item instead but anyhow this works really well uh, so the, oh, I see it did it again. So if I select Earth and then this, it is fine. The moon clears that, that's fine. If I go back and select that and this. Oh, it didn't do it again. All right, anyhow, I uh, clear this all out. Um, if I select my Earth as a departure and I have a port of travel and I select a destination of the moon so you have tranquility ooh did it again did it again earth select an item moon <laughs> now I'm getting it a lot so what is causing that that's gonna be one that's a big headache so if I select an item then I select here. If I leave that default, if I leave it alone, oh wow, 
Now nothing's working. Okay. Leave that alone. Click that, it's fine. Reset the whole app here. This is kind of scary. I don't like bugs like this. They're almost impossible to troubleshoot. Click Earth. I'll pick another value. As soon as I click Moon, that's when this goes back. So my selected value is getting destroyed somehow. Huh. What do you know? But only if I pick it in the UI every time though. Well, at least I've got something that's repeatable now. So when I select my destination, it clears my port of travel. That may be a bug in my code. But uh, let's get back to where I was and we will troubleshoot that momentarily. If uh, now I have, if I select something here that is already selected here, uh, for example, Mars and Mars, it causes me to reselect this item here. Um, it doesn't fix the um, validation though. It doesn't reval. Oh, okay, there's no validation to begin with looks like I broke some validation as well um, but anyhow now I'm clearing that out so let's name this properly and uh, this is actually a function that we can call and give a name to come on refactor oh I gotta stop stop from running and I will refactor this to extract a method. That method will be called clear uh, destinations. Clear destinations. And why am I passing the selected value? Oh, okay, yeah. That's, that is need to be there, okay. So now I have a function that I call. So on location changed, I select my selected value, I get my ports, and I clear destinations. So this is odd though. Um, whenever, let's look back at the bug now. This could be a data binding issue. But the instances of these um, the instances of these controls should be unique. So I'm not sure why it's doing this. If I select Earth and then I select any item here, if I select a destination, this gets cleared. So let's look at the on, um, so it's clearing that. Uh, let's look at our component real quick, our drop down component. And it says that when the selected location is changed, we'll handle that on selected location. We're going to invoke that uh, location changed async. So make sure we don't we don't have anything crossed again. Um, we have locations and ports here. Locations and ports. Uh, we have our selected value, our port selected value. Um, What's odd too is it sets up an empty state and there are not any empty states in the input select, the second one, the port. But 
when I select a location from the second dropdown, the second set of dropdowns, um, I'm going to trigger desti destination changed. And destination changed takes the form and sets the selected destination. It doesn't touch the selected port. The um, departure ports. Departure ports is left alone. I'm not touching that at all. Why is departure ports being affected by that change? Unless there's another update happening and state has changed isn't being called, and then once the state has changed again, that is what is affecting it. So let's let's try to trigger a state change. Um, let's refresh this. If I do Earth and then I select any item, and then clicking this button does the trick as well. That's exactly what it is. So I think what the issue is, is if I select this item, and then I select this item, it is not preserving the state of this item for some reason. So there's no state has changed that has happened, but it is setting the value back to, uh, the selected value isn't preserved. Um, it is now an empty string. I wanna say null, but it's not null, it's an empty string. Even though it's showing this, it's not persisting that value. If I click on anything and update the UI, that then goes away. So, it has to be um, something to do with the second input box where the value is not being bound properly. What would that possibly be? Port selected value here, uh, the form on this page is bound form port of travel is just a string huh it's not binding correctly is what's happening so I'm using bind value here but it's not actually binding. It's not taking the selected value. That is definite. It's displaying the name. Ah, uh, I think I might have, I might have the, no. It should be automatically turned into a string from there. Let's try something silly, to string. Let's see if this does anything. I think that's actually it. I will tell you how I got to that conclusion in a moment. But this is really silly if this is the answer. And I think I might have run into this many times already. This is another one of those things that's a common little bug. And uh, every time I run into it, I feel like it's new and shiny again. So it has to be something to do with the fact that it's an integer. Nope, that didn't do it. Oh, crap. I thought I had it. That is not it. Oh, this hurts. So if it's default, it's okay. It's the minute I select something. That doesn't work. Default value is okay. Selecting the value is not okay. Where's my Blazer fans, my experts, my my chat room, my Chris Santee, my my Mr. Magoo? I 
call upon all of the Blazer experts. What am I doing wrong here? What have I done? Um, so it has something to do with um, with the uh, values here. The option values, it doesn't like them. So when I'm binding this value, it doesn't it's it's not updating correctly. Um, when I select an item from that list, it disappears. So my bind value is not saving properly. So two-way data binding is not working with the selected value. So what if it's just, what if I just set it to value, but then when it changes, it won't update. Bind should work. I don't know why it's not working. Could be something to do with me toggling the null or the disabled state too. I might have to turn that off temporarily and see how it deals with that. Temporarily, we'll set internal error value expression. Per, yeah, I have to set a value expression if I'm going to use that. I want to do, I definitely want to use bind here, but it's not preserving it. I'm going to remove the disabled portion for just a moment just to make sure that doesn't have anything to do with it. I would really hate to have to handle this manually uh, because I know I'll be trying to trade the other part back for bind later once the errors are fixed. Um... Let's think. All right, so the, the null is disabled. So I disabled that nullification bit. That's not it. So the null can come back. Or disabled, I mean. Disabled can come back. It's the bind value that's tricking, tricky. Um, could it be the key thing? Uh, key... Ensures that the component will be preserved across renders if and only if supplied value matches. Maybe that's our issue. Uh, this two string can go away. We didn't need that. That's not definitely not it. Um, this could possibly be it. So this key is a hint to the diffing engine to make sure it doesn't inadvertently throw away a variable or a value. Um, when it is doing its diffing algorithm. Let's give that a try. Since we're shuffling around so many different states inside of that option, uh, or this option list inside the select, maybe there's something that we need to key. And my build has hung. Let's try this again. I haven't had a build hang in a long time. So, what's going on here? There we go. That time it worked. All right, so if I select Earth, now nothing works. Darn it. Oh, wait, there it goes. It took a second. That was slow. Holy cow, that was slow. And it still didn't help. Criminy. All right. Drop down list, dead. 
Tea does not help. Only if I select an item. That's what's got me thrown off. Um, so that key did not help. What if we try keying it by name? Maybe the ID is not enough. Or, ah, uh, let me try something else here too before I kill that. Let's do a quick refresh. Let me see what's actually being bound to this list. View inspect page. Yeah, the values. Well, those are there. Uh, port of travel. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a problem. Inspect. Whoops. You inspect this. We have our form. Oh, there we go. Why didn't I see that a moment ago? Anyhow, the value options are here. They have the ID that is correct. So we have ID numbers. Uh, we're binding it back. It should be a string. Uh, so we've got a raid going. Uh, let's see. Who is visiting us? Uh, CM Griffing. I'm trying to place the name. Uh, thank you for raiding. Appreciate that. 29 viewers. Uh, we are doing some Blazor programming here. Some uh, Blazor. Um, let me jump over and just uh, check out some info here real quick. Uh, so we are doing some Blazor. And uh, Chris Griffin, thanks for the uh, raid. Um, we're doing .NET in uh full stack .NET development with uh, the web. So we're building a web application that runs completely on the .NET stack. Uh, we have um, .NET running uh, server side uh, Blazor and uh, it uses a uh, SignalR technology to keep in sync with the view. And uh, I'm doing some troubleshooting right now because it is throwing me a loop and I can't quite figure out what it is doing. Um, we have some cascading dropdowns, and when those cascading dropdowns take effect on one another, they don't quite like to keep the values binded. Um, so value binding is broken, and I am on a mission to fix it. I haven't quite been able to put my finger on it yet, so let's give this app a rerun. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we can figure out what's happening here. Um, I have a form that is backing this web form. And it has some information I'm trying to let users select from. It's quite ugly at the moment. It's just a prototype. We'll beautify it much later. Uh, so I have um, this travel form. If we select our departure, say Earth, uh, we get a list of uh, spaceports. I can select a spaceport, and then I need to select a destination. Now, this is the weird part. When I update any portion of my UI, I lose my, my selected value. So if I select a destination, poof, this selection goes away. If I submit my form, poof, it goes away again. So it is not preserving this at all. And I cannot quite figure out why. Um, I'm assuming it has something to do with the value types I'm using. And the way that um, strings are handled by the drop-down box versus 
uh, my selected value, and it is so my point, my port is um, the one that's getting cleared out is my selected port of travel, and my selected port of travel is a string. Now, when I select that drop down box, the value is set here. Port selected value is going to be the selected port of travel. Uh, that is a string as well. But these end up being an integer. So something is not quite right. I haven't been able to figure this one out yet. So I'm wondering, I should probably see if this bug, um, this bug was present before I moved. Uh, Angular developers raiding a Blazor stream. That's fine. We have choices these days, which is always great. Uh, so this is very similar to the um, the C sharp version of Angular. If you want to make that connection there, uh, we're doing full stack web development all in C sharp though, instead of JavaScript. Um, and one of the little catches that's getting me is this data binding business. Uh, so uh, I don't have anything against JavaScript development. I've done plenty of it myself. Um, this is just uh, something that is new and um, Blazor caught my eye because I'm a .NET developer and I like the .NET ecosystem. So this is where my head's at right now. Feel like I need to set up a basic drop down box and just make sure that data binding is working in general. And I'm not quite sure why this isn't working. Um, it's persist. Well, let's see. It's not persisting those values. Let's set up just a regular drop down box. We won't tie it to anything events or anything and let's see what kind of behavior it has so let's set up an input uh, select input select so input select is a wrapper around the vanilla select box and it, it gives us a little form validation and stuff it's nothing really fancy. Um, it does have some quirks, though. Uh, Blazor is still in its beta state. Uh, so there's still some stuff um, that, uh, that needs to be kind of patched up. Um, so reactivity is still JavaScript through WASM under the hood anyway. There, there's, yeah, a lot of truth there. Um, so what essentially has happened is the .NET runtime has been compiled to WebAssembly. The code that I'm writing is then running on that runtime. Um, any DOM updates or uh, browser APIs are then, pa uh, JavaScript call is then passed through uh, from the runtime in WebAssembly to JavaScript. So yes, uh, there's JavaScript running under the hood to make it all possible. Um, yep. Uh, so WebAssembly is running um, currently in, um, is it running in the JSVM or is it running alongside? I think that either is in the spec that it's going to be run outside of the VM or it has already. 
I need to check on that one. Um, I know it 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 bootstraps what uh, JavaScript bootstraps WebAssembly. I don't know if they're running in the JS VM though. They're running. Uh, you're in the same sandbox. But uh, anyhow, uh, it's uh, definitely not like a death to JavaScript type thing. It just takes it out of my development stack. Uh, let's see here. Doomer has a question. Um, did not jump into the tornado that was Angular TypeScript for app, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I agree. Uh, stayed with MV MVC5 and felt left behind. Blazor came is a blessing. Totally agree, uh, Doomer. Um, not missing this opportunity. Uh, Enterprise has multiple Telerik licenses. Well, thank you very much, Doomer. Um, Oh, great. So you're launching a server-side application soon. Soon. Uh, so first of all, thank you, uh, Doomer, for uh, for those Telerik licenses. I work for Telerik and uh, appreciate our customers very much as a uh, customer myself. Um, yeah, we have a really good product, and I'm proud of it. So uh, glad to have you uh, tuning into the show, and uh, I'm glad you like Blazor. Um, big fan of it myself. And um, it does really compress that stack that you talk about there. You don't have to worry about all of those other tools and TypeScript and transpilation and all of that stuff. So it's nice. Nice breath of fresh air. Um, we do need to figure out this data binding thing, though. So I'm just going to set up a uh, another input that pulls in some of the same values and just see how it behaves without some of the uh, events that it's tied to. So I'm going to pull in the uh, port. Um, let's see, form.selected departure. And we're going to use the input select. Uh, we're going to get this value and bind it. And what else do we need here for an input select? Let's throw it in a form group just so it doesn't break our form visually, like 100% throw it all out of whack. Um, there's. Uh, let's actually comment these out as well, just so these don't go haywire. Uh, we should probably stop the app from running at this point. And oh, thanks for the follow, Eddie. Appreciate the follow. Welcome to the show. Uh, troubleshooting some drop downs here. So I'm taking out some drop downs that we just built because they're misbehaving. Uh, let's see, this needs a closing tag. It's an input select. Um, oh, wait, this input select needs some values inside of it. So we need to for each over our location. Uh, locations. Oh, come on. Jeez. Uh, let's see here. I've got this code already. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat it when I already have it. Let's toss that here and troubleshoot this. So the issue was when I select an item, if I click anywhere else, uh, this needs to be departure locations. Uh, when I select anything else on the form, my data binding gets lost. Why does that happen? That would like to know. It is almost ready for production. It will be very close after preview eight. Um, I would say it's gonna be, server side is going to be as stable as it's going to get for quite a while. So let's give this guy a run. I've taken out the cascading dropdowns uh, just to make sure 
we can select a value. If I change this, this isn't having an issue. This does not have a problem. Um, it is the cascading values that have a problem. So that works. <laughs> uh, yeah, suits are a different issue. Explaining things to lawyers and suits, not fun. Um, don't know if this is because it is inside of another component maybe, but just binding values like this seems to be fine. So I'm not sure what the issue is here. I may have to reach out to someone for help on this. I'm, I'm stumped. And uh, I've worked with Blazor for quite a while and I am just flat out stumped what is happening to this value and why it just disappears on me. So just confirm that the form has the right types and properties to let the values persist, yet they don't persist. So here's the issue. If I select Earth, I select a point of travel here, port of travel, and any other interaction on the form drops this value. Disappears. I cannot set it for the life of me. Cannot set it. Um, I'm not sure why that is. It is as if the state is not being saved, that property is not being written back. Uh, is it because it is inside of another control or component? Because I've encapsulated these together? Do I need to invoke maybe... A, no, this is an... This is a event callback, so it is handling a state change on its own it shouldn't require any more state has changed um, when I select on location changed it then fires that value change and this data binding here just seems to not work whatsoever If it's an auto property, set a breakpoint on the setter. It is not, unfortunately. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah. Let's see what we get here. <clears throat> if we can even do this. Boom, select a port value is null. Null. Port selected value. Wait, did I hit the right one? Yeah. So why did it get set twice? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, Breakpoints just appearing everywhere. Not what I intended. So I am actually setting. I might might have had that on the wrong property. Uh, Selected port of travel is what I want to get a breakpoint on. If I select Earth, that's null. Null. Why is it set twice? That's odd. Nothing happens when I set this. That's part of the problem. Yeah, that value is not hitting a breakpoint at all. So the port selected value is this guy here. See if it's just not communicating that value back. Should just be a property passing along a value to the other property. Let me 
doesn't seem to be setting a value. That's what I'm trying to figure out, though, is why it's null. But why is it null? If I isolate these components by themselves with no other code, it seems to be fine. And I don't know why it's setting like several times. I guess one's a get, one's a set, possibly two, three, four, four times I hit the breakpoint there. Why? Boom. Null, 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 null. That one hit. Oh, that is uh, the word port of travel. That's the label. The debugger got screwy. Null. Company had a couple dev craft, craft licenses. Established cybersecurity department. Uh, so there's a little backlash against Java because of security. Good deal. Yeah, this this value never gets set ever for some reason. Um, very strange behavior. Not sure why. We're binding the value, but the value is never set anywhere. I uh, tried adding key here. This is a little blazer helper. Uh, that did not work. Didn't help the situation. Um, hmm. So what I can try to do here is I can manually just handle this and we'll see what happens. I'm not quite sure why, but just binding the value doesn't want to work in here. Um, what I'll do, actually, let's do this. I created a, um, I created a new branch. Let's go ahead and commit what we have. Then we can jump back to before I did the refactoring. And we can see if that bug existed prior to the refactoring. So let's go to GitHub or Git commits. Look at our changes. Uh, these are all uh, refactoring. Refactored cascading dropdowns. Uh, so we'll put that commit in that branch. And then let's go to the last good branch. Um, and we will rerun this application. So this is before that stuff got refactored out. And there's some other, um, some other code that we put in to make the dropdown boxes dependent on each other. So we'll go back a commit and just make sure that the work that we did didn't cause that bug. So data binding is great in theory, but I've found that data binding in practice is always a pain in the ass every time. And every framework I've ever worked with that has data binding, there's always some little quirk that you bump into and you end up just going back to doing it manually. That's just me. I don't know. Uh, that's always the experience I've had with it. Um, and that goes for anything. If it's Angular, React, I mean, um, MVVM, there's always some little thing with data binding. You're just like, well, I just wire this up myself and it'll work and I don't have to worry about 
some magic uh, that that went wrong inside of the box somewhere. Um, so this looks like an issue that stems from the refactoring that we did because it doesn't exist in the previous version. So I can select items here all day long. Uh, so I'm assuming it may have something to do with the fact that it is uh, been a component encapsulated within another component. And it does not like trying to persist the uh, value back. There's like a missing state has changed or something in here. So I'm gonna go back to the branch we were on. And uh, taking that code and trying to encapsulate it in a component seems to have caused this issue. So it has to be something with parent components and child components. So there's some state has changed, not happening when it needs to happen. Because we, if you look at, now it's gonna be back. This is, yeah, any, any kind of change here causes that to disappear. So something is definitely wrong with that abstraction. Um, it should have been just a simple wrapper, which is why I'm surprised it's causing such an issue. So it's this drop down was just embedded inside of um, uh, just a component wrapper. And why would that cause this type of errors beyond me? Um, just to be, just to eliminate all possibilities here, which I would assume that if we we're not getting a state change uh, when the location is changed. Huh, yeah, I don't know. Clearing the selected destination, which is fine. Hmm. If I took all that code and put it smack back on this page I bet you'd work that's that sucks I really wanted to refactor that out because it's like 60 lines of code that we took out to replace this um, but there is a two-way data binding issue here somewhere I'm wondering if it is, well, if it's something to do with the fact that this is maybe just binding one way here, something I'll have to look into. So what it may end up being is this, this could be it's just an idea, but well, actually, let me let me double check something first before I go down this this rabbit hole. If I select the moon, and then I select Earth, and I select a drop down, and then I come back here. Yep, that one does it too. That one does it too. So it is definitely part of this component that is the issue. i um, wondering if I have to do like a two-way binding here, like this, uh, to properly bind that value. Like that, is that what I need? And if I do that, um, then I have to code that, that to a data binding out for that property because I don't have a matching event for it for two way binding. It has to have a matching event called port selected, on port selected changed, or whatever value changed, something like that. Don't think the framework will pick that up by itself. 
internal error. Yep, does not have a matching property. Port selected value changed. So in order for that to work, I have to supply an event. Uh, let's look at the component. This actually could be it. It's just uh, user error. My bad. Um, oh, I didn't catch Doomer having to leave, uh, but I uh, appreciate you guys showing up. So uh, what it could possibly be is I'm not doing two-way binding. And uh, to do two-way binding, you have to have a matching um, event. And this would be event callback uh, of string, I believe. If it's a child component, you don't have to wrap it in a cascade. You don't have to wrap in cascading parameters. Yeah, I don't think cascading parameters are the reason. Um, I think this is a data binding issue. I need to have this event callback so it can raise a state has changed. And thanks for the extra brace there, Visual Studio. Um, Let's see if that solves the error. I'm not going to handle this myself, but the event system needs this to handle it internally. And that's possibly why the value is always null. And every time I run my app, it comes up off screen. There's like a. Um, I think it's control shift enter or something will fix that but anyhow if I select earth then this then anything else nope <sighs> have fun meeting with your suits I think we are gonna wrap this up for the day I am frustrated I don't know what's going on with this and it has something to do with a parent component so I tried doing some two-way data binding just now. Um, I added a bind method, and I signed it to the selected value, and it still disappears on me. So that's not helping. Um, so I think it's unable to pass through the form and actually bind the value for those boxes for some reason. Which is kind of odd because it seems like it does okay with the things that I'm explicitly setting. So I guess my next course of action might be to remove, um, well, not only remove this because it's not working, but, um, to also just manually handle all of this. I, the bind, data binding is just not being my friend. It's, it's working against me, not for me. So I might as well just handle things manually. So I think I'm going to end things there. Um, I will pick this back up on Friday and we'll figure out uh, why this isn't binding and maybe just circumvent the whole data binding system altogether because it's not being friendly at all with drop downs we we've had several issues now with drop downs uh, one of them is a compiler bug that is being fixed in the next release so uh, we're kind of fighting against that and now uh, abstracting a drop down into a parent component uh, has caused some issues again. I'll probably offline just look into the source code for um, the input select again and see how they're handling things. Maybe there's something in 
my code I'm missing in my component, but components should be as simple as just wrapping things the way I did. And uh, everything in here seems to work except for this bind value. So this port selected value, I don't think it's able to communicate back the value that's actually in there. Um, and I'm not quite sure why. So we will have to see uh, what is happening there. What may ha end up happening is we can't bind within another component. Uh, we'd have to handle this manually, and then that can actually be bound outside of the parent component using bind. So we may be able to do it at the top level, but not internally, which I don't know why, but that seems maybe it's the case. So we will, let's go see if we can find somebody to raid, and we'll pick this up on Friday. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. Jeff Fritz is a monster streamer. He is still going. Um, he was on before me. He's still going after me. And um, we'll go ahead and raid him. So I'm going to queue this up. Let's go say hi to Jeff again. Uh, he must be doing another workshop or something because he has been on hours and hours and hours. Uh, so let's go say hi to him before he closes out his day today. Thank you guys. Uh, we'll catch you again Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'll do some research. I promise we'll fix this and figure out what went wrong just like we did last time. Uh, take care.